Unit 144, The European Union. Well, Gerald, you English always have to be different. You drive on the left-hand side, you talk in pounds instead of in kilos, and now you don't want to change the pound for the euro. I think that what you really love is to be different. Well, we'll go over to the euro only later. <laughs> it's a British pride. The whole of Europe anxiously getting ready to implement the Maastricht Treaty, and you don't even want to go in. Can you tell me why? Or don't you know? Look, first of all, the European continent is not very popular in our country. We British have always liked to be at the other side of the channel. The disappearance of the British pound is traumatic for us. <laughs> so it's for sentimental rather than for financial reasons. Well, it's not easy for us to get in anyway. While we were hesitating, you made a great effort to meet all the conditions. But your economy is going very well. Yes, but our interest rates, for instance, are at 7%, whereas yours are at 4% or less. A change of three points can't be made just like that. But doesn't the European Union cheer you up? What about you personally, Gerald? As a businessman, doesn't this process interest you enormously? It stands for a market of over 300 million. Yes, I understand the advantages, but I'm not looking forward to it. It's as if I'd always lived in a beautiful family mansion, and suddenly I'm offered 10 million pounds for it. Obviously, I would sell it, but I'd feel bad about it as well. Gerald, the world is going to have three major powers. The USA, with 219 million inhabitants. Europe with 268, without you, and Japan with 126, and three currencies, the dollar, the euro, and the yen. In spite of its imposing name, Great Britain has no chance if it doesn't join us. It's true, I understand, and it's a pity that we aren't as excited as you are. You need to bear in mind that we're an island, and we've always had to cross the channel to visit you. Well, don't think always of the channel. Now you can cross the channel by train. Yes, but look how the tunnel, which cost a fortune, is a real disaster as a business. I think that's symbolic. The first time there's a physical link between England and the continent, it doesn't work. Who knows? The same might happen with the European Union. I'm sure the EU is going to be fantastic. Europe is the most highly developed and best prepared area in the world. The only problem is that its home market is small. And after the Union, which market is going to be bigger? The EU or the USA? Very similar. EU trade, excluding you British, is equivalent to 19.6% of the world total. The USA, 19% and Japan 7.7%. And what about exports? The whole of the EU exports 18% of the world total. The USA 16% and Japan 8%. It'd be great if we understood each other, but if there's as many problems as there were to solve the Yugoslavian question, we'll spend the whole time in meetings. Gerald, we're about to live through a fantastic experience. Europe is going to surprise everyone. The Americans had better get ready. I don't know, Ernst. They belong to a younger civilization. They're just 500 years old. They've got more energy. We're, we're already more decadent. They're more willing to work while we're dreaming about a 35-hour week. They work very hard. They're different. The 35-hour week is going to come, and it'll be good. High technology has caused a rise in unemployment in Europe. There's no unemployment in the USA and nobody talks about 35-hour weeks there. Because there's a higher consumption rate there. We don't have that same consumer fever that they do. We don't change our car, television or fridge so often. We're more mature. That's true. But if we work 35 hours, the unemployment rate will diminish, 
and we'll all have more time for leisure, which will make consumption rise again, and there'll be work for everyone. I see you're very optimistic, but I've read that you'll have to print 18,000 million euro notes. That's going to cost you a lot of work and a lot of money. And the change of currency is going to bring about such a mess in each country for a while. You'll be kept very busy. I'm certainly happy to be able to experience this important change at such an active moment of my professional life. I think we're going to experience very interesting things that we can't even imagine at the present. We're going to spend three days dealing with all these matters here in Brussels. I'll tell you what I think about the Euro after that. I hope you feel better afterwards. The European Union, the change of currency, a new century, and a new millennium. What more could we ask for? I'm feeling a bit better already. By the way, when we finish on Friday, you could come to spend the weekend in London with me. You could phone Jutta tonight and tell her to get on the plane in Frankfurt. I'll phone Diana and tell her to organize it with Jutta. That's a good idea. We could take the channel train in order to help them amortize it. I'd like to try it out. I always love going to London. It's a very lively city. Even though we're so strange? Mm-hmm.